On February 11th, 2019, in Healdsburg, California, accompanied by my friends John and Derek, I went out to eat at this place called Single Thread. We actually started off this experience with a quick pit stop at Safeway to pick up sweets and whiskey as a gift for the team. Pro tip for fine dining restaurants, this gesture is always appreciated. Single Thread has been open since 2016 and earned their third Michelin star last year. This will be my second time dining since their opening year. After some custom beverages in the entrance room, we were shown to our table complete with their signature canapé spread reflecting winter in Sonoma. Eight different bites from Little Gem Lettuces with black rice and a tofu emulsion, beets that have been roasted for three days in the hearth, parsnip panna cotta with Hokkaido sea urchin, trigger fish with poached liver, scallop tamago with black truffle, oysters, spotted night jowl with brown butter and nasturtium, and pickled purple daikon, say that three times fast. Pickled purple daikon, pickled purple daikon, pickled purple daikon, Dungeness crab with kane miso, and a few more that I just didn't record or didn't remember. All of this was accompanied by a 2014 Grand Cru Champagne from Verzi. Believe it or not, John actually brought wine to this meal, but he still gets the wine list because always give John the wine list. But wait, snacks don't stop just at the table spread. Warm ones came next with spaghetti squash wrapped in seaweed and then tempura fried with mandarin, black cod with malted potato, farm egg custard with mirin sabayon and shirate kombu. This is just absolutely one of my favorite ways to start a tasting menu with this kind of gastronomic bombardment. It just oozes generosity, seasonality, variety, and there honestly wasn't a bite that we didn't enjoy on the table. But if I had to pick a highlight, the farm egg, the Dungeness crab, and the trigger fish were all standouts. Next up on the wine side, 2009 Jamek Riesling. I think most of us were in agreement that this was our favorite wine of the evening. This is a warm towel. Just a friendly reminder, don't eat that. Compact grapefruit, cara cara orange, and wild sorrel granite. Clean flavor on the fish, winter citrus, balanced seasoning, no complaints here. Red abalone from Santa Barbara, roasted above the hearth, kohlrabi, saltus, and California white sturgeon caviar. Super meaty and tender abalone, luxurious and vegetal cream, and a salty pot from the caviar. To pair with that, this is Flowers Chardonnay from the Sonoma Coast. While we are talking about wine, this one would pair next. Ulysses Collins Rosé de Sagny. I know I said the Riesling was the favorite, but this one comes in as a very close second for me on the beverages. My second time enjoying this dish, they pulled this back out from the archives. This is not currently on their menu. Aura King Salmon, smoked over cherry blossom wood and dressed with malted rice vinegar, served with trout roe and a salad of young ginger and radish. Hands down a classic single thread presentation in my mind. This is just as tasty as the first time I had it. Next up, a table side tofu presentation. This was originally designed for vegetarians and vegans, but this has made it on the main menu after being so popular. So yellowfoot mushrooms and chanterelles that we would actually forage for the next day. Shout out to everyone that's seen that vlog. Enoki mushrooms, turnips from their farm, and pine nuts. I wanted to use the phrase melt in your mouth with this, but that's not accurate enough to just how light this tofu was. The omami from the mushroom and the earthy turnips made this a really memorable vegan presentation. Switching to red, 2015 Big Basin's Rusan from their homestead block. Pairing that with a roulade of guinea hen, sunchokes, broccoli, and a sauce made from quail. I marked this in my mind as a very hard shift from kind of light Japanese presentations to almost modern California cuisine. This will become more obvious through the next few dishes, but don't get me wrong, super tasty. I love this dish. Black cod caught off the line, roasted leeks, a plethora of vegetables from the farm, and a savory broth made from fermented chilies and citrus. Great body on the broth that would dress the vegetables as you ate it. Lovely Maillard reaction on the fish that seemed to me like a torch maneuver that still actually preserved its tenderness. More wine. John brought along this incredible 1993 Ridge Zinfandel. I don't have words to articulate how tasty this wine was. There's just something really special when stellar California wines has the opportunity to be enjoyed after being aged for so long. We were told this is the first time they've served this. Always happy to be a guinea pig. Salsify that's been lacquered in vegetable powder and raspberry vinegar and then filled with spring onion custard. Salted plum jus with black garlic, fiddleheads, morel, wild herbs on the left here with roasted Duclair duck on the right that they source especially for the restaurant. We are very quick to give them our humble thumbs up opinion on this presentation. Next up to pair, Whitcraft's 2016 La Graine, right next to a Bloodroot Blades steak knife to cut into this American Wagyu, delicata squash that's been curing for 10 months, 
crumble from the seeds, shallot jam, and fried oxtail next to that. Fatty beef with sweetness and saltiness is such a killer combo. This dish also changes depending on the cuts that they have available because they're using the entire cow. A collaboration that Single Thread does with another awesome company, Russian River Brewing, makes a wild ale for them, and that's what's being poured here. Serving that with this, Japanese purple barley, farro verde, negi, crisp rice, bone marrow, beef cheeks, and wild herbs. A very Japanese way to end with grains. This would complete our savory courses and paired fantastically with the beer. Inside this bowl is a whey granita, Douglas fir pine, gooseberries, and rosemary sablé. Lovely transition going into sweet land. Walnut ice cream, pruned plums, and a nochino cream, a caramelized green tea steam cake, and a plum sauce. Really solid fruit and nut combo while also not being too heavy. Tying the bow on the meal here, ending just as generously as it started in the black cups burnt honey custard with blood orange, robios tea ganache rolled in puffed amaranth, dates filled with sesame paste, and those eggs are edible. It's a shatteringly thin shell of white chocolate and cocoa butter that explodes with a golden milk seasoned with ginger and turmeric. Just an incredible way to finish an outstanding tasting menu. On top of the $200 deposit for the menu, my share of the beverages came to $58.66 after tax. 30% tip on top of that with some quick math brought my total to $278.66. My thoughts on this experience mirror my first time. For a chef like Kyle Connaughton to have so much technique in his arsenal, but have the ability to let seasonal product with so much attention to craftsmanship and presentation be the star is a real testament to his skill and experience. Add to that the genuinely fun hospitality and gorgeously custom dining room on top of that, and this still stands out as one of the best restaurants in the U.S. and arguably the world in my mind, especially at that three Michelin star ranking. Massive shout out to the team at Single Thread for taking such good care of us. Where should I go eat next? Let me know down low in the comments and do me a favor and get some color on that like button before you go. Thanks so much for your attention. My name is, of course, Justin Kana, and I hope you have a good one. 